Okay, good morning and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, today's cooking demo will be cauliflower mashed potatoes. And we're really excited to show you how to prepare this recipe. My name is Bina Glykadosh and I am a nutritionist with the uh, New York City Department for the Aging. I also like to introduce to you um, my three moderators who have been a huge help in preparing for today's demo. We have Octavia Zhao, who is a student at Boston University. Um, she's a senior there and she is one of our nutrition volunteers. Um, we also have Lauren DiCanto, who is a dietetic intern at Columbia University, and Chi Yu Yang, who is also a dietetic intern at Columbia University. So um, I'm really grateful for all of their support that they provided in assisting with today's demo. And um, just as a reminder, um, all centers and programs should have uh, received an email in May from DIFTA about counting virtual programming units and a memo in December about nutrition education. If you have any questions about that, please contact your program officer and nutritionist. This event has been brought to you by the ACL Grant Virtual Smart Living Initiative in partnership with the New York City Department for the Aging. Okay, and also please save the date for our December cooking demo um, on December 14th, Wednesday at 11 a.m. Um, the recipe that we'll be doing is beef egg drop soup, and uh, that will that cooking demo will be in English and in Cantonese. Um, so please tell your Cantonese speaking friends about it, and uh, please mark that into your calendars. If you have any suggestions of recipes that you'd like to see demonstrated in our future demos, please send any recipe suggestions to virtualsmartliving at aging.nyc.gov. And um, as you've known, if, um, if this is your first time attending today's demo, or if you've attended previously, you know that we've done um, a lot of different demos and um, those have been recorded. So we have um, many of those are stored are on our cooking demo library website. And um, thank you, Lauren, for displaying your screen. As you can see here, um, there's a whole list of recipes in English with um, the, if you click on any recipe, you'll see that there is the recording along with um, the recipe card. And um, if you go to where it says alternative, alternate languages, um, you'll see that we have um, some recipes, uh, demos that have been done in Spanish, some have been done in um, Cantonese. So um, please feel free to check those out. And um, this is a great resource to see our past demos and to see the schedule of our upcoming demos. Uh, so definitely feel free to check it out. And I'll ask Lauren to put that link into the chat. And um, another thing that I wanted to mention is um, some of you might know that um, as part of our other um, services that we provide, um, we our nutritionists provide individualized nutrition counseling over video. So this is, um, if you have any like personal um, health concerns or just wanna improve your eating, um, you could meet one-on-one -on -one with one of our nutritionists over video and um, you know discuss any concerns that you might have or if you just, again, if you just wanna improve your eating. And um, this is a free service. We also have um, bilingual um, dietitians who speak Cantonese. Um, so if you speak Cantonese or if you speak any language other than English or have any friends or family, older adults who would be interested in meeting with a nutritionist but don't speak English, we also have um, translation services available. Uh, so please um, feel free to spread the word or um, take advantage if um, this is something you think you might be interested in. And we are also offering um, free nutrition educational items to participants who attend their very first session. 
So um, for those of you who may have already attended your first session, you'll hopefully be receiving the item soon as we've um, the shipment was delayed, but we just recently received it. So we hope to have those mailed out to you soon. And um, if you are interested in, uh, in meeting with a nutritionist, I'll ask um, Lauren to put the information into the chat um, of the phone number you could call or the email um, that you can send your name and your number to. So the phone number is 929-262-0761. And the email will be the same, virtualsmartliving at aging.nyc.gov. And I see that someone has her hand raised. Um, for now, please put any questions um, into the chat. And after the recording, uh, you can um, unmute yourself. Okay. Um, so now that we've um, went through our announcements, we're ready to start today's demo. And um, as I mentioned, the recipe that we're doing today is cauliflower mashed potatoes. So as I was thinking about what would be a good recipe to do during the month of November, um, you know, Thanksgiving is next week and um, people are thinking, making plans for the holiday and, um, you know, celebrating holidays could, um, doesn't mean, still could mean that we could enjoy eating healthy foods. Um, so cauliflower mashed potatoes could be a great alternative to regular mashed potatoes. This is something that you could prepare for your Thanksgiving meal or really any day of the week um, if you wanna add in um, a great vegetable side dish, um, you could prepare this recipe. It's very easy to make. Um, it is flavorful, it's garlicky, velvety, creamy, um, and not complicated to prepare. So I'm hoping that you'll enjoy it as much as I did. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do before preparing any recipe is make sure to wash your hands in, uh, for 20 seconds with soap and warm water. Now that since my hands are, are already washed, um, we'll start preparing the recipe. And um, if you see here, this is what the final product looks like. So this is what we're gonna to prepare together today. So um, the first thing that you're going to want to do is to steam um, some cauliflower. Okay. So, um, you could use fresh or frozen, whichever one you prefer. Um, I decided to use, um, frozen, frozen cauliflower and I'll just, um, uh, hold up the package so that you'll be able to see it. Um, this is what I got from the store. Uh, this bag, um, contains 24 ounces. So, um, I, for this recipe, I just used, um, half of the bag. If you are using fresh cauliflower, um, then you could just use um, one head of it. Um, the reason why I personally really um, like to use uh, frozen vegetables is because uh, it can stay in my freezer and if I don't prepare it immediately, I know that it won't go bad. So it's a good way to, you know, it's a budget friendly way to um, sometimes have vegetables stored if I'm not exactly sure when I'm going to prepare them. So um, what I did was um, I steamed this cauliflower and um, I heated up, um, if you can see behind me, there's um, a pot with a steamer. So um, I'm going to bring that over here to show you what it looks like. Okay. So this is um, what I used to steam the cauliflower. And um, I put the frozen, um, first I put some hot water in the bottom of the pot. And then I put the cauliflower into this um, steaming basket. Uh, and I put it directly when it was frozen, I put it in here. Um, I had it steam for about 20 minutes. And then um, afterwards I transferred it um, into this bowl over here. Okay. So um, I'm going to also just uh, quickly go over the ingredients with you. So we have the cauliflower here. Um, you're also um, going to want some garlic. 
So um, in this recipe, I used um, two cloves of garlic. And what I did to prepare in advance was um, I just uh, minced it and then sauteed it a little bit until it became brown. So that took about three minutes. Okay. The next thing that you'll need is oil. So um, over here is about a tablespoon of oil and the other half a tablespoon was used to uh, saute the garlic. Okay. Over here, I have some salt, pepper. Okay. Um, this is unsweetened plain almond milk. And then uh, we can add some parsley for a nice garnish. All right, so now that we know the ingredients needed for this recipe, um, what we're going to do is uh, start putting all of these into the food processor. So let's move these aside. Okay. So here is my food processor. And um, I'm going to start off by adding in the cauliflower. So depending on the size of your um, food processor, you might decide to just put in, let's say, um, half of the cauliflower and add in um, some of the other ingredients, process it, and then um, add the rest of it. Okay. All right. So. Um, I'm going to add in a little bit of the garlic. Okay. I'm going to add in, so this is, um, the recipe calls for a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. Um, when I tasted it, I felt like it needed a little bit more. So I'm actually using a half a teaspoon of salt. So I'm gonna add some of that here. Um, the Recipe also calls for like um, a dash of pepper, but um, I like my food to be very flavorful. So I put in about a quarter of a teaspoon of pepper. Okay. Um, and the recipe calls for a tablespoon and a half of oil. Um, I use canola oil. Um, you can also use olive oil if you like. Um, so as I mentioned, half of the tablespoon was used um, to saute the garlic and I'm gonna, this is one tablespoon here. So I'm gonna add some of it now to this. And finally, um, this is a quarter of a cup of almond milk. So let me show you what the package looks like over here. This is, um, as you can see, this is unsweetened almond milk. So that means that there's been um, no sugar added to it and um, it's not flavored. So um, this is also pretty low in calories. One cup is only 30 calories. Uh, we're going to be using, um, the recipe calls for a quarter of a cup. So I'm gonna be adding in a little bit here. Okay. And then when you're ready, You'll want to close this up and get ready to start processing it. Okay, great. So now I'm going to clean off the sides and uh, I'll add the rest of it. pepper, the salt, and the rest of the garlic, and then the almond milk. And the thing that's really great about the almond milk is that it makes it easier to puree this and really gives um, this dish like a nice creamy velvety texture.
Okay. I'm going to open it just to make sure that everything is getting mashed up. Wow, and this smells really good. I could smell the garlic. Okay, this is, looks like it's all set. So I'm going to transfer this over into a nice bowl. So this looks really fluffy. Um, and creamy and I'm sure that it's also really tasty and it even looks like mashed potatoes okay if you're wondering whether it actually tastes like mashed potatoes it doesn't it tastes like mashed cauliflower but it's a great way to mimic the mashed potatoes because of you know it's fluffy it's creamy and it tastes good even though it tastes a little bit different Okay, and then if you like, you could um, make it look a little nicer by adding in some uh, fresh parsley, fresh basil, whatever you like. We'll add a little bit of that here. Okay. All right, folks, and here it is your cauliflower mashed potatoes, nutritious, delicious, and easy to make. So some other points that I wanted to mention um, about this is that uh, cauliflower is a type of cruciferous vegetable. And um, crucif cruciferous vegetables, um, the reason why they're called that is because um, the way that the, the flower petals um, grow are in the shape of a crucifer or a cross. So um, other examples of cruciferous vegetables include uh, broccoli, turnips, um, kale, Brussels sprouts, cabbage. Those all belong to the family of cruciferous vegetables. And um, the research um, suggests different health benefits that cruciferous vegetables have. Um, for example, um, they may help with um, promoting heart health, helping with weight management, protecting against cancer, um, improving glycemic control, which could be um, useful for diabetics. Uh, so there's really um, a lot of health benefits that um, cruciferous vegetables could offer us. And so that's why it's important to um, try to eat more of those vegetables if those are something that you um, aren't typically having. Um, and just in terms of cauliflower in specific, if you um, are ever curious of learning about um, you know, a specific food, one way that you could learn about it is even just by looking um, at the nutrition facts label. So. Um, over here on the back of the package, there's a nutrition facts panel. And it says that the serving size is four pieces, which is about a half a cup of um, cauliflower. So by, I'm not sure how well you could see it, but it says that the serving size is four pieces. And something that if you look at this closely, what you'll also notice is that um, a half a cup of cauliflower has only 25 calories. So that's um, a great example of a nutrient dense food because for a very small amount of calories, only 25, um, the, something like this, um, this vegetable is packed with nutrients. Um, cauliflower is a great source of vitamin C, which is really important for our immune systems and um, also for healthy skin. And um, another thing that, uh, cauliflower is a good source of is potassium. Potassium has a lot of health benefits like um, for uh, healthy blood pressure. And um, also what you'll notice is that it's very low in sodium. And 
Um, one serving also is a source of some fiber, which is important for, um, has a lot of health benefits, like keeping us full for longer. Uh, so, you know, this, these are some of the um, health benefits that cauliflower gives us. And um, cauliflower is just, as you can see, it's a very nutritious vegetable. And um, another reason why this makes a great alternative to mashed potatoes is because cauliflower has a lot less carbs. So um, if you take a look over here, um, the amount of carbs in just one serving of this is only four grams. So this is um, significantly less than regular potatoes. So um, if somebody is concerned about, um, you know, if somebody is diabetic and concerned about how much carbs they're having, um, swapping this for um, the starchy vegetables or other forms of starch could be um, a good way to get in less carbs and also um, less calories for people who um, are concerned about that. So if there's any questions in the chat, um, can I have one of my moderators please read them out loud? Yes, we have uh, several questions. The first question comes from Luda um, asking, can this recipe be done with broccoli instead of cauliflower? Sure, you can definitely do this um, with broccoli as well. You can also do it, let's say with turnips, with celery. Um, there's a lot of different options you could use um, if you prefer those vegetables. And we also have a question from Brenda asking, could you use a blender instead of a food processor? Sure, you could use a blender. Um, if you don't have a food processor, you could also use a potato masher. Um, you could, you know, you don't need to have the food processor. So um, if you use something like even a potato masher, it might, the consistency might not come out as creamy. It might be a little bit more chunky. Um, so, but the flavors will still be there and you'll still be getting, you know, those nutrients. So those are good alternatives as well. Great. I think that also addresses, um, uh, Mahor Ray's question asking, um, if there's no food processor to be used, can the potato masher? So definitely we can use the potato masher, right? Correct. Um, and also, uh, we have a question. What are, uh, what are some other ways to um, eat cauliflower? Yeah, so if you, let's say if you're not so into the idea of having mashed cauliflower, there are so many ways that you can have cauliflower. And that's one of the beauty of, of this vegetable is that it's really versatile. So um, you can have it raw and enjoy it with like a low fat dip. Um, you can use it in a stir fry. Um, you can add it to a salad. Um, you can also, some people like to um, use it as a good substitute for like grains or other starches. So you could, um, you know, if you make it very fine, you could use it um, instead of rice. So there are so many ways um, that you could enjoy cauliflower. And, you know, I encourage you to explore different ideas um, to enjoy it. Great. We also have a question for from Ms. Alona asking, does, does this recipe turn slightly watery? So that's a good question. Um, the, and it's important to be mindful of that because you don't want your cauliflower mash to be too watery. So um, that's why one thing that's important to um, keep in mind is like um, when I was steaming the cauliflower, when I took it out of the steamer, I actually used the spoon with the holes in it so that um, it would drain the liquid. Um, so you wanna make sure that you're not carrying um, the extra liquid and putting it into the food processor. That's also a good reason to um, steam it as opposed to other cooking methods so that you're not getting the extra water along with it. Great, so we also have a question from Stonewall asking, how long did you steam the cauliflower? Yeah, so good question. Um, because this was frozen, um, I steamed it for about 20, 25 minutes. But um, if you were using raw cauliflower, then that um, it might take less time than that. Basically, you just wanna make sure that the cauliflower is tender so that way 
it'll come out nice and soft and easily be processed in the food processor. Okay, and the last question here is, um, do you serve it hot? So you can serve it hot. Um, and um, if you choose to prepare it in advance, um, you can reheat it or you could even serve it cold and it still tastes good. So that's up to your preference. Oh, we have another question from Miss Alona asking, can you add cheese to the mixture? Yeah, sure. You can add cheese to the mixture. Um, if you are choosing um, to add in cheese, you may want to look out for uh, low fat cheese um, and something that's not too high in sodium, but the cheese could add a nice, um, also give it an extra level of flavor and texture. So um, that could be a nice thing to add in. And what time, at what time do you suggest to add the cheese? Um, I would, so if you're adding in the cheese, um, in terms of when would be a good time, if you want, you, you could, um, I actually haven't done it before, but I would think that, um, you, you could add it in, um, directly into the food processor, um, and just have it blend in with the other ingredients. So you mentioned that um, we could use uh, broccoli and uh, besides cauliflower, we can use broccoli. But if I don't like cauliflowers or broccoli, what else vegetables can I use as a substitute? Sure. So if you want to use a different vegetable um, to, uh, to instead of this, you could um, also use celery, butternut squash, um, you can use turnips. Um, there's a lot of different options that you could um, substitute in case you want something else. I think that's the questions we have for now. Okay. And one other point that I wanted to mention is that um, if you are taking um certain medications like coumadin or warfarin, um, that uh, certain cruciferous vegetables could be high in vitamin K. Um, so um, that if you are taking those medications and um, are going to be making a change um, to your intake of vitamin K, then um, that's just something you would want to be mindful of, like in terms of how much, um, because uh, certain food, certain like eating foods high in vitamin K may impact the use, like may impact the efficacy of those medications. So um, just something to be aware of if you are making changes um, to your intake of those foods and are on those meds. Okay, great. So um, uh, we're gonna uh, wrap up today's recording. And um, I want to, first of all, thank my staff members again for helping with moderating today, today's demo, Octavia, Lauren, and Chiu. And um, also, um, as a reminder, our next cooking demo will be on December 14th, which is a Wednesday, and it's going to be at 11 a.m. The recipe is beef egg drop soup. And um, the demo will be in Cantonese and in English. Uh, and uh, if you have any suggestions for recipes uh, for future demos, uh, please uh, be sure to email us at virtualsmartliving at aging.nyc.gov um, to share your ideas. Uh, and I'll also ask Lauren to put into the chat our cooking demo library. Um, where you'll be able to find our um, past demos and recipe cards. As I had also mentioned previously, for anyone who missed it, um, we do offer, um, as part of our grant services, we um, have the opportunity for you to meet individually with a nutritionist, and this is a service free of charge. So um, if you have any personal health concerns, um, if you have a chronic condition like diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, chronic kidney disease, um, if you're looking to uh, lose weight or to gain weight or just want to improve your eating, 
you could meet with one of our nutritionists over Zoom, FaceTime, WhatsApp, um, WeChat, and um, receive personalized information for you. Um, if you know of somebody who could benefit from the service, um, but doesn't speak English, we also have translators available. And for those who attend their first session, they can receive a free nutrition educational item. So we're hoping that you're going to take advantage of this great opportunity. If you're interested um, in getting more information, feel free to call us. Our number is 929-262-0761. Um, or you can also email us at virtualsmartliving at aging.nyc.gov. And um, also as a reminder, all centers and programs should have received an email in May about uh, counting virtual programming units from DIFTA and a memo in December about nutrition education. If you have any questions, please contact your program officer or nutritionist. This event has been brought to you by the ACL Grant Virtual Smart Living Initiative in partnership with the New York City Department for the Aging. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we hope that you'll be joining again soon.